way to be TV, where there's a better way to be than atheist or theist. Uh, my name is Elise Elrod, and uh, Joni and I are your hosts tonight. Um, it is February 11th, 2016. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, several things. We've got two sets of scriptures here tonight that we're going to talk about. One is... Oh, yeah. One is the Christian text, if you will, and one is the Gnostic text. I'll give you an idea of some of the things that are in it, some of the things that would be more familiar to you. Um, the secret book of James, the prayer of the Apostle Paul, the gospel of truth, the treasure on resurrection, uh, the secret book of John, the gospel of Thomas, the gospel of Philip, uh, on the origin of the world, the exegesis of the soul, the book of Thomas, the holy book of the great invisible spirit, uh, the wisdom of Jesus Christ, the dialogue of the Savior, the revelation of Paul, the first revelation of James, the second revelation of James, the revelation of Adam, the acts of Peter and the twelve apostles, we're, we're looking at Christian scriptures that we got from copies of copies of copies of copies and didn't have a codex, a book of them until hundreds of years later. And the same thing is true of the Gospels of Peter or Philip or Mary or uh, the Gospel of Judas or the Gospel of Thomas. Same way. All we have is a copy that's made from copies of copies of copies of copies of copies, of copies and is hundreds of years out from when it was actually written. We need to understand that in the Christian gospel there is a certain supernatural story that is a very big part of the Christian gospels, of course, in the Christian, the Christian New Testament. And that is concerning the monotheistic single one and only God who became a human, who sacrificed himself for the sins of the world. That one God was also the creator. And that's that's basic knowledge for most Christians. Now, in the Gnostic text, there are many gods. It's a polytheistic uh, kind of a thought pattern. There are many different levels to, the, uh, to heaven. There, in, in, in that case, the Gnostics uh, are dealing with a very different scene with a very different outlook on the supernatural. Both sets of texts obviously quote Jesus or say what Jesus said. And they represent Jesus and his sayings in different ways. What I'm doing here is a proposition. It's a what if question. And it was simply trying to answer the question is what if Jesus was a simple man with a simple story and you take all the supernatural away, what would you have? And does that show up? And, and of course, my first book was written on um, from text from the Gospel of Matthew in the Christian text. But does that then also show up in some of these non-canonical Gospels? What we are absolutely not doing is we are not arguing over which supernatural story is correct. And that has to be remembered all the way through this. That is not at all what we're doing. In Christian circles, you argue that the Christian Gospel that we have now is the right Gospel um, and, the, and is the right thinking and the right way to, to look at things. And, and, the, and the Gnostic Gospels, or the, or the uh, non-canonical Gospels and the non-canonical writings, that those things are in error, or they are simply interesting books that were written by people, uh, you know, trying to make some other point, but they are obviously not the inspired Word of God, which they consider the Christian Gospels and the Christian New Testament to be. We're not trying to solve the argument between two supernatural things. And what I'm really interested in is what might have Jesus taught that would be uh, worthy of him having developed a following? And does it show up in the non-canonical Gospels Does it, like it does the, uh, the canonical Gospels? I've had plenty of church members who did not believe that uh, Jesus was born of a virgin who maybe did not believe that Jesus walked on water or turned water into wine or any other such things, that they didn't believe in supernatural things uh, so much as, as they just considered themselves to be followers of Jesus and they were Christians. If I say you're a Gnostic theist, then what you're saying is you're absolutely certain there's a God. 
Okay, and that's fine. I think some people are. If you say that you are a Gnostic atheist, then you're saying, I'm absolutely certain there is no God. And there are hard atheists who will say that. Okay, I can see that. But the agnostic theist and the agnostic atheist, I can't quite see. The agnostic theist, I can see that in a way because you're not sure. You believe there is a God, but you cannot be absolutely 110% certain there is a God. Okay, I've heard church members and followers of Jesus, Christians, people who self-identify as Christians, say that. Now, but an agnostic atheist, well, atheist just means not a theist. I don't believe in God. In other words, atheist just means uh, not a theist. Well, agnostic means not a Gnostic. That is not all-knowing, not, not for sure, not certain, not uh, the absolute truth kind of a thing. And so how can you be an agnostic atheist? Because what you're saying is, I'm not certain about not being a theist. <laughs> I mean, that's what all that adds up to. And it gets to be a rather silly sort of a conversation. It kind of follows the same kind of strain as orthodoxy. Um, orthodoxy is simply, uh, as Dale Martin at Yale University describes it, is the winners. And heterodoxy, or heresy, is the losers and that's the way it got that's the way it gets explained because the christian community will say they hold the orthodox view and then what is in the nagamati library is obviously not the orthodox view and so hetero orthodoxy simply means right thinking okay the right a right view a right belief heterodoxy simply means other belief of course heresy means the wrong belief but many people will say you know, um, my doxy is the right doxy, and, and your doxy is the wrong doxy. You know, uh, my doxy is orthodoxy, and your doxy is heterodoxy, or the other doxy, if you will. But the truth is, it's still a false dichotomy. And the reason it's a false dichotomy is very simple. Think about it for a minute. If I say I'm orthodox, if I say that, I, that I, what I believe is the right thing to believe, and I hold these beliefs because I believe they're the right thing for me to believe, I would think also you do the same, whoever you are. And if I didn't believe it was the right thing believe, to believe, would I believe it? Or would I change? If I thought I believed the wrong thing, I no longer would believe it, would I? And so it's a false dichotomy. Everybody is orthodox. In their own thinking, everybody is orthodox. And I don't, this doesn't just apply to Christianity. It applies to everybody. Whether you're Buddhist or whether you're Hindu or whether you're a Sikh or whether you're a Muslim or whether you're a Christian or whether you're Jewish, you know, you believe what you believe is the right thing for you to believe. Therefore, you are orthodox. Now, somebody else might not believe what you believe, but they also believe themselves to be orthodox, don't they? To hold the right belief. And the same thing with the look here or look there. Uh, the Father's kingdom is spread out all over the earth. With a, Jesus was says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is in right. our midst. Right? I mean, right. That's, very, that's very different than what is in our Christian gospels. But it expresses the same sentiment in terms of thinking about the way. You see that? A absolutely. Yeah. There is so much writing that has now been discovered that's in these first two centuries or so that... The argument over what would be Christology and what would be theology and what would be orthodox, if you will, the argument over that went on for a very, very long time. It was very involved and it's very different and it's one of, part of it's polytheistic and part of it's monotheistic. <laughs> Christianity formed in a very different way than we ever learned in Sunday school. It, it seems like the atheist-theist argument is like you've you've got a take a, a rock hard position and and uh you know one of us is an idiot and it's not me yeah. well with here too uh, my granddaughter lila a year ago made her first communion and my son grandson shane he's 13 now and they have been when they've been coming over you know i read different things like uh, the books on Buddhism and, and the Wiccan and everything like that. It's more pagan than Wiccan. And mm -hmm. so they've just uh, been, oh, can we pray? 
and 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 we'll pray to this and grandma i'm going to pray that you have a very strong guardian angel and things like that and bless their little hearts you know they're so sweet and i'm not going to tell them that it's not going to happen because you know their belief is it's new it's 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 in its infancy i'm not going to tell them that they're wrong at all right 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 no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. If I had if I had someone else's child over here, if I had one of my own nieces or nephews over here or something, I would not. There's no point in it. I don't care. I mean, I just don't. I mean, this, 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 this quest for me is not about converting anybody from anything to anything. It's just not. The churches that I've pastored, people who follow Jesus but believe all kinds of things, yep. call themselves Christians. And I, I wish the rest of the world would understand that. The inerrancy of the Bible is an argument in Christianity. Mm -hmm. you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not an argument just yeah, outside yeah. of Christianity. It's not a foregone conclusion that the Bible is inerrant or inspired inside Christianity. If you ignore everything else and you focus on the fundamentals and you don't want to hear anything else, that's what I call a fundamentalist. Yeah. All right? Yeah. But I right. think the oh, funda I fundamentals are t Jesus' teachings, period. Huh? That's fundamental. No, that's not my point. Yes, no. No, yes that's not the point. The point is, the point is, there the fundamentals have been defined, and the fundamentals, in the case of religion, is most often has to do with what supernatural things do you believe. My cousin goes to a school where they teach that dinosaurs never happened because right. it's not in the Bible. I mean, that's yep. like that's insane. You know? yeah. right. I don't know if any of you heard or read. Uh, what the Pope asked for people, Catholics around the world, to give up for Lent instead of, say, chocolate or alcohol or something. He asked them to give up apathy. He asked them to give up their hatred toward one another, right. their hatred toward other religions, to mm -hmm. open their minds and open their hearts. And, you know, I, I am 59 years old, and it... All I, all I said was, it's about bloody time. <laughs> Carol, you got any words? Well, just what I said before <laughs> about the fundamentalists. I think that's they're amazing that they don't believe in dinosaurs. Um, have you, have you been, life. have you been to the uh, museum in Kentucky, the, the Creationist Museum in Kentucky? I think I have. I think I have. I've also been to the, yeah. to the National Museum, whatever it is, in Washington or New York. Anyway, I've seen dinosaurs. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the Christian Creationist Museum in Kentucky. No, I don't where think I have been to that. Where yeah. Adam and Eve and, and the dinosaurs are kind of mixed together. I I think they actually right. have <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Dinosaurs were chasing them around, right? <laughs> I saw I saw somewhere I may be wrong about this, but I saw somewhere I think what like they had a child riding on a dinosaur. You oh, know, that God. kind of oh, God. God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're trying to make sense of of the creation story within science, which yeah. I'd give that up if, if I would. <laughs> the atheist theist argument is stupid. It just doesn't even need to be had. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. either believe in things that are supernatural or you don't. You yeah. one one of you can't prove yourself right, and the other one can't prove you wrong. Why don't we take it for what it is? And I just I happen to think that if Christianity had allowed all of these writings to be mm -hmm. out in the sunshine and kept right. them out in the sunshine and dealt with them for what they are you mm -hmm. could still today say i believe i believe these things but i don't believe mm -hmm. those things well guess sure. what True. people are doing that anyway i'm looking for sayings that point toward jesus having t taught the way to the people of the way i think christianity has run from a lot of things it had no business running from and now he's got to figure out how to back itself back into reality. Yeah. I, that's, because I don't think Christianity is going to die. That's not what I think. I think yeah. it's going to change. And I think it's going yeah, to change yeah, a lot. Yeah. It, has, it has to evolve, right. yeah. It has to, yes. Right. Carol, you want the last word? <laughs> word. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Um, it's very interesting. Like I said, I want to read this book. I've always heard about the other Gospels. And I, I knew that some of them were really wild. You know. Well, yeah, so yeah. It'll be interesting to look into that and compare them to 
what we consider the Gospels. But let me let me say something to you, Carol. Let me say something to you now, though, and this is important. Okay. If you if you lived in the first couple of centuries, you know, uh, it, between um, um, from the time Jesus died up until maybe till the third century or so, what you what you would understand is that. They could the, the people who believed in the levels of heaven and all that. Mm -hmm. When you say it's really out there, okay, mm -hmm. it's out there to us now. Right, right. They they thought it was as reasonable mm -hmm. as uh, those who were or arguing the other views thought that was reasonable. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right, Carol, because you said about two weeks ago you said we need to always bring this back to the way, and and I think there's no question about that. Mm -hmm. What we're trying, what we're trying to do, is the way. Um, yes. I'm just, I'm real interested as we go through some of these gospels that, that are not in our canons. Um, the, the scuttlebutt that was running around about what Jesus might have said, does it leak into those gospels as well? And does some of it sound like the teachings uh, that he taught the people of the way? I think that's central. Yeah. Because that's Absolutely. if they were known as people of the way, they were known for that way for a reason. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. That's that's my whole thing. All right. Here's the credits, you guys. Thanks a lot. Okay. Have a great Hi, week. Bye. See, I'll see you Sunday, Carol. Bye. Bye. Okay. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.